Welcome to FWC Tactical Knowledge, where the analyst of football is raw and detailed. Please remember to like and subscribe. Welcome to Future World Class TV and we're analyzing the World Cup match that took place between France and Argentina. Now, hats off to both teams, they put up an excellent match. It was one of the most competitive matches I've ever seen in football. And hats off to both teams. Now, we dive into the systems that both teams use starting with Argentina. Now, Argentina started off with three at the back and sometimes two at the back, as you can see here. But starting with the 2 2 5, um, the centre backs are always supposed to create this triangle when in option, and this is because the, the central centre back is supposed to have options, and that's supposed to be given to options are supposed to be given to him by the wide center box which are here so indeed they create a triangle now in the midfield the diagonal shape was given by both midfielders where you have a deep line playmaker and a box box midfielder but the box box midfielder was more way more high in the attack which could create a six up front which will, will look like a six up front but it was way up in attack and the deep line playmaker was here which the diagonal shape was more which expand but typically in a diagonal shape will be here that they play because in the Argentina match the box box is feeling was more here or alternate here now as I said the deep line playmaker is a person that the player that is responsible for giving the options to the center box and he connects the defense to attack. The box box midfielder helps out in attack and defense within the midfield, so basically, he's supposed to be one of the fittest players on the pitch. Now, within the half space, you had attacking midfielders and they, they played between the center back and the left back. They were mostly between the center back and the left back. Now, the striker played as a false nine. And sometimes as a target man, which a target man is to bring in other oppositions, bring in the opponents, bring in the teammates into play. And a false line is a person that drops within the midfield, a striker that drops within the midfield to give support. And both aims are to, to score goals. A striker aims to always score goals. Now you have the players on the width that give width. And they always talk to the line. Yeah, now sometimes Argentina converted into a two at the back. Now sometimes Argentina, as I said before, use a two at the back. And when they use a two at the back, they allow three players to be in the midfield. As you can see right here, they were normally talking, or one player would be out here and the rest would be in the middle. And the same rules will be carried out by the five players up front. So Argentina normally rotated with a, a three at the back or a two at the back. Now, now Argentina defensive structure were of a 43 high press and a 442 low block and mid block. Now for the 43 high press, I guess they used the 43 high press because they know that France is going to use three centre backs. So they allowed the Argentina players to be on the French three centre backs and they wanted to over overload the midfield because they knew that France were going to use two players in the two midfielders and one as I always say played as a deep line playmaker and a box mark midfielder. But they overload the midfield, so they control the middle of the park and they had four players at the back for the high press. Now, when they converted into a mid block, they used a 442. And a 442 is when you have four players at the back, you have the two wingers that tuck in to support the midfielders, the two midfielders in the middle to create also that four 
in front of the defense and they had the two strikers up front. Now the two strikers sometimes play as a flat or either played as a diagonal where one would drop off to mark a deep line play to mark one of the midfielders. And in a low block they played also 442. And when you're in a low block you basically part the bus so you come more compact within the center. Yeah, so it basically come more, very much more compact within the center and that allowed the center to be congested and they gave opportunities to the wide flanks because the center is the most dangerous aspect to not control. And yeah, this is Argentina's structure. Now, French structure was the same structure that Argentina used but they played it in a different way. And they played in a different way was boiled down to the midfield. Now, they had the two centre backs, as I said before, and they, they, the job when attacking is that one stay deep and the two with the options for the central centre back, which will create a triangle, and then the deep line playmaker was responsible for connecting defence to attack and, and normally generally picking up the ball. And they had the box box midfielder who would go up and attack and defence. Now, instead of the box box midfielder joining the attack like this, like our Argentina did, the box box midfielder was here, and this is how. The t this is how 3-2-5 is typically played where the box box is filled with normally create a diagonal like this. So it wasn't high in attack like how Argentina midfielders. And then you had the two players in a half space, and as we said, the half space is between the center back and the left back. You had the striker who played as a fast nine, who generally to drop and play as a fast nine. And then you had the players out wide who was responsible for giving the width as they were basically the only players on the wing. Now, France's defensive structure was a 5-2-2 mid-block and sometimes they changed into a 4-4-2 mid-block. Now, the 5-2-2 mid-block consists of the three centre-backs where the wide centre-backs tuck in beside the central centre-back. Then you have the wing-backs who tuck in beside the, the wide centre-backs. And the mark that space which is right here. You have the defensive midfielder who is responsible for ensuring that other two midfielders come back and create the three within the middle and sit behind, sit in front of the defense, the five at the back. And then you have the strikers who were playing as a flat. And this is what they used within the 5 3 2 mid block. And then Sometimes they converted at the later part of the game they converted into a 4-4-2. Four, four, Which I don't think was a pretty good decision because as I, as I know the 5 3 2 is it uh, the defense that has everything, a little bit of everything and the 4 4 2 mid block they don't have a defensive midfielder so some spaces could be penetrated like for instance around here or here the space within this region where the defensive midfielder is not there can be penetrated a lot by attacking by the Argentinian so I don't think that was a good decision but they converted into a 4 4 2 mid block at some times and yeah this is the structures that both teams played um, future work class perspective and there's a, there's a lot more content that's going to be made on training technical development tactical development physical development um, and yeah just look out <laughs> future work class tv <laughs>